This is today's Daily Walk in Wisdom. We're in Ecclesiastes. I'm reading once again from verse this is 1 through to 8 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Here we have the contrasting tension of opposing forces. Life teaches us that we have to learn to walk a path of tension. At the same time that I was going through the grief of my father's death, I was also welcoming a new grandchild into the family. We walk within a matrix of good and evil, operating simultaneously. It's not as though they're operating alongside one another, but they're constantly crossing each other's paths. This makes life confusing. We don't know whether to laugh and dance, or should we weep and mourn? We're laughing one minute and crying the next. The wise man says that we need to master every occasion and not find ourselves subject to the winds of change. That with wisdom, we can have the appropriate response to whatever time and season we find ourselves operating in, no matter the paradox of the situation. So Solomon summarizes the contrasts wherein we need guidance and where wisdom will help us thread the needle of our lives. Each of these things we could spend a whole session on. I could probably spend a whole day on each of these sessions. And we'll go through them quickly. So the first contrast is birth and death. There are critical times that we must get right. Birth and death are those kinds of times whenever anyone or anything is born, then all energy is focused upon the child or all energy is focused upon the birth of a dream. And there needs to be nurturing and feeding and protection and warmth. So too, at the time of death, the death of a person or of an enterprise, uh, we need to be focused. We need to be giving it our attention. Um, I officiated at a funeral this week in which we honored the life of someone who just 10 days prior to them going into glory gave their lives to Jesus. A funeral is a time of focus. If we don't focus right at that particular time, then we won't uh, traverse the passage into our grieving properly. 
uh, and something will be held up within us, held up within our lives. Um, we need to be aware of the grief process so that we don't end up feeling as though everything is meaningless. And we need to let go of that which has passed. Otherwise, we'll be dragging the dead around with us. <clears throat> when that business has fulfilled its time and its stage within your life and it's time for you to retire and pass that thing on, you need to do it well. If you're a leader of a church, you don't want to be holding on to things. You want to let your church go when it's time for it to be let go and move on. God's got other things for you to do. Uh, or have a relationship still, but make sure that you aren't keeping so many fingers in the pie that whoever is leading that church can't have the ability to be able to capture the dream of God for themselves. Then it comes to planting and upright rooting. If you plant at the wrong time, in the wrong season, you'll not have any success. You'll make it an easy task more difficult than it would otherwise be. If you don't know when, get guidance. Then there comes a time where you've got to move on. You can't move on if you still have your roots in the old. John the Baptist said, the axe lies, all re the axe lies ready at the root of the trees. Then we come to killing and healing. Some things you need to kill. All of us have areas in our life that we should not be entertaining, not be trying to keep alive. Kill that thing, kill that memory, kill that false hope, kill that lie. And there's also areas in our lives that God longs to heal. Sometimes you need to kill something off so God can heal you. Then we're tearing down and building up. Sometimes you want to build on a site where a house already stands and before you can build, you've got to tear the old down. The tearing down is critical but easier said than done. People will oppose you. Many will prefer the old to the prospects of something new. And then it comes to weeping and laughing. Notice the weeping comes first. Your ability to experience true joy is commensurate to the depth gained through hardship. And it says, mourning and dancing. Scripture says, you turn my mourning into dancing. It's easy to get stuck in the mourning stage. We want to hold on. We want to honour those that have gone before us. And we feel like at times that we're trapped within this thing. You have to allow God to bring you all the way through. And you won't know you're all the way through until you can dance again. And it talks about scattering stones and gathering them. It would be easy to understand this if the gathering came first and then the scattering. But Jesus gathered the twelve and then he released them. He scattered them to fulfill the Great Commission. It would be easy to talk about that. But it says the scattering comes first. If you don't go, then you won't grow. If God hadn't scattered the tribes of Israel and sent them into captivity, they would never have returned to him. If you don't let your children go, they'll never find their way back to you. If you don't invest, then you'll never get a return. Then it talks about embracing and refraining. You want to always have open arms, but when there is danger or duplicity, or damage, don't go there with open arms again. How will people learn that they're being offensive if you don't let them see that you're offended? Then it talks about searching and giving up. Once you've found Jesus, you can give up all your searching because you've got the thing that you need to find. You found what you've been looking for. Stop searching for other things once you've found Jesus. Once you've found Jesus, you've discovered the meaning of life. 
And then it talks about keeping and throwing away. This is a message to all of you hoarders out there. If you haven't used that thing that you've got in the shed in the last five years, give it away. Throw it away. Get rid of it. It's taking up space. If you haven't worn those clothes in the last two years, give them away. Let somebody else wear them. You're not wearing them. You don't need them. Get rid of them. <laughs> Be free. You don't need it. Then it talks about tearing and mending. When there was great offence against the Lord, the priests would tear their clothes as a sign of separation. Whoever did the offence of their separation from God. There's a time when relationships between people need to be severed. They're not healthy. Codependencies are distorted relationships, distorted friendships. Sever them so you can be free. Parents, you need to let your children go. And children, you need to go out and not be so dependent upon your parents. Once you, you know, you can't be 40 years old and still depending on your parents. You've got to grow up. There has to be a severing. Yes, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. You can't cleave to your wife if you're still clinging to your mother. Uh, but some relationships that have been severed, God wants mended. So don't find yourself holding onto a grudge when it's mending time. And then it talks about being silent and speaking. Be slow to speak and quick to listen, and you'll be considered wise. When God gives you something to say, though, don't allow your timidity to keep your mouth shut. Say something. And it talks about loving and hating. You need to love God and hate all things, and hate all things that are against God. You need to love God and all things that are good, and hate all all those things that hinder your love for God and your love for all things that are good. And then it talks about war and peace. If you don't fight for what is right, you'll never enjoy the peace that comes from the victory. So these are the big things. The big things in life that have all the potential to make or break you. It's essential that we approach each one with wisdom holding in tension these two opposing forces. Otherwise, life's lessons are lost and we come adrift from our anchor and we wonder what's the point. Think about it. The world is your university and everyone in it is your teacher. Make sure you're attentive so you can learn and master each situation that you find yourself in. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow for some more wisdom from the mighty book of Ecclesiastes. Oh.